ladies and gentlemen, it, it's a, a great honor to be here. And I want to just make a couple comments here, concluding the introduction. Uh, first of all, uh, do all the good you can in all the ways you can to all the people you can and just get it done. Now, that's the mission here of this Wege Foundation that Peter built and founded as a principal in 1969. To further introduce myself in 1969, well, he had a vision that there is a pollution problem and it is a tidal wave and it's coming. It's not a tsunami. I was graduating from high school and I was more interested in Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. I wasn't interested in pollution and energy and and here this guy is, doing all he can, because he's got this vision that, uh-oh, we got a man-made problem, and it's going to take a man-made solution. So he finds this foundation. Well, Neil Armstrong, a big buckeye down in Ohio, he's up walking on the moon. So Coach Kaiser, I decided I'm going to Western Michigan. The coach liked me. I wanted to play linebacker. And I'm coming over here to the western side of Michigan, and I'm going to learn aeronautical maintenance engineering. So Tom and a couple of you guys that are from western Michigan, it feels good to be back over here again. Now, Jonathan's correct. Through Bill McDonough, Ford Motor introduced me to McDonough in 1999. And McDonough said, what do you do? Well, Mr. McDonough, I, I, I go into plants and they cut their energy bill in half. What? Yeah, I kind of, I'm just a little businessman. I'm no big deal. But I'll tell you one thing I can do. It comes to aerodynamics and thermodynamics. I can really help you. God gave me that ability. So be more profound. What do you do? Well, in 1984, see, I went into Ford Motor Company and I said, it's time to turn off steam. It's time to turn off chimneys. We don't need chimneys. And it's time to not use coal. And Ford Motor, Mr. McDonough, politely threw me out. In fact, they had security escort me to the door. And then General Motors, you know, they denounced it. And Goodyear Tire and Rubber, I remember, they told me I'm a wacko. You know, you can't do that. So anyway, uh, what is it you all probably wonder, well, what is it you want to do? Well, my senior thesis was a 747 airship. See, in 1970, excuse me, 1972, my fraternity brothers were designing it. And it was the audacious goal that said, if that Airbus don't work, Boeing is bankrupt. So my frat brothers are telling me all about the prototype that's flying around the country, and they're trying to develop this big Airbus. So I wrote my senior thesis on how to keep 436 people Plus or minus one degree. Because if that thing, pressure vessel, couldn't be comfortable, it was out of business. It'd no longer be a passenger, passenger airship, international and domestic. <clears throat> now, the Weggies asked me to come here and speak. And I kind of worried about, oh, man, you know, I'm not academia. By the way, I'm not proud of that. But I come from the factory floor. I do solutions. I'm not bright enough to do research. I need the universities, the professors, the researchers to do the, tell me the problem. Heck, though, God gave us all the ability to develop a solution. That's the easy part. But we've got to understand the problem. So I started reading up on this Weggy Foundation and what it stands for and why it's together, and then Jonathan my friend that I met through the U.S. China board, through Bill McDonough, uh, you know, Jonathan says, boy, I'd really like it if you come over. I think the mission is in common. And when he told me what you're doing and why you're here, it is. Now I'm going to try to make this quick. I don't have a lot of time. Mark has asked me to conclude by 1230 so we can go get lunch. So if all of you just pay attention, don't ask questions, I promise you, get lunch. I want, I want to make it quick for you. I could lecture for a long time. Number one, I'd like to emphasize something. I'd like all of you to stand up and shake hands with the person beside you or behind you, please.
Thank you. Okay, now if you now if you please be seated, I'd really appreciate it. I I don't have time to lecture on technology, but here's what you do when you're not good enough to be the star on the field. You get on the sideline and you help others win. When you're in lab class and in lecture class and you're in third level calculus and you're not getting it, you make sure you go get a 4.0 student and he'll help you because you're just a 3.0 student. So as I decide to focus on a solution, one thing I learned real early in life is there's people out there that can do it. I just got to go find them. So the 3.0 guys, all we do is hire the 4.0s in that field of science. And thanks to you universities, it's a walk in the garden. You know, I want to point out what Peter Weggie was telling the world in 1969 when I was graduating out of high school. You ready? 1972, here I come. Coming home from Western Michigan, first place I go is down to the beach in Catawba Island where I grew up. And we guys, all of us football players have this big football game on the beach. And we get the girls out there, <laughs> that's why we play. And we get the girls out there and we're all out there and we're all 20, 20 years old. And guess what happened? 1972, summer of 72. Got to the beach and the sign was up. Beach closed. You all remember that? Got to the beach and I go home and I said, Dad, you can't believe this. We're not allowed on Jim Beach. We're not allowed on East Harbor. What's going on? Son, I got other news for you. We're not allowed to go catch the fish neither. We're not allowed to water ski. Now, the reason I bring that up to you is, wow, did that strike me as, what is going on here? You know, what are we doing? So as I go on through aeronautical engineering and, and, and do my thing, I uh, wanted to share with all of you, I'll never forget Lake Erie. And by the way, when we were finally allowed on it, boat only, when we were, it was pretty bad. And it can be reversed. The lake today is wonderful. It's because people like you care. It's a man-made problem. It can be a man-made solution. So it's, it's that simple. Uh, you did a handshake because I wanted you to understand that if your arm was on standalone control, this event you just saw would have been ugly. You'd have all been falling over each other. The arms would have been trying to shake hands. But instead, you went to global control. And global control said, there's a whole bunch of motor outputs that got to happen before we allow the handshake with the neighbor. And the reason I point that out to you, I'm in energy efficiency. And to oversummarize, what do I do? We put intelligence on this building, but it doesn't take care of this room. It takes care of the building. And it knows what this room needs. And it makes real sure that any rejection energy in the building is going to make sure it's fed to this room. So it's really that simple. A little bit about coaching. Isn't it neat? I know for some of you, you don't appreciate it, especially you professors. You're the greatest coaches that emphasize in, in, and you have such an impact on our new beliefs. Students come to college to not just gather information. They develop beliefs. When we coach them on the football field, the sum of their beliefs is called attitude. It has a lot to do with how you impact them. So, you know, when you get into team, I'd like to introduce you to your first team you were on. Family, schoolroom, your class, just think about it now, your fraternity. How about your associates at work, your faculty, most important, your state, your community, and not last, not least, your country. Well, now this pollution thing's got so big, it's also gone. Now we better worry about our planet, take good care of our planet. It's hurting. It's starting to regurgitate how we live on its surface. And today, because there's desire, we can motivate you. It's not hard to motivate people now. There's desire. So once you got motivation, now you can start to write out solutions 
and they can bring you unlimited potential. Uh, I'm an experience of that. You know, everybody, I want you to remember this. The last thing you want to do in life, if, if you want to win, is divide yourselves. You know, every general will tell you, divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. In the football game, what do we do? We divide and conquer. Study film, divide and conquer. I was fortunate enough, because of my commitment to China, I had to, I had to quit coaching. So Coach Tressel asked me to come into Ohio State as a consultant. So I, I, I spent 20 to 40 hours a week with the Buckeyes, you know, studying the opponent, studying the opponent. Why? Because you want to understand what's the issue, and then the solution becomes a little easier. 1984, I walked into Ford Motor Company and Goodyear and General Motors and some of the big Fortune 100, and I said, uh, Mr. Plant Engineer, I'd like to uh, have you consider no, no, need, no more need for steam, no more need for chimneys, and, you know, no more need for coal. And they took me on with a pretty radical debate, and, and uh, I, I, lacked a, I lacked a lot of credibility at the time. I was just a little entrepreneur, much like... Uh, Peter's father, I got me an SBA loan. I second mortgaged the house in the wife's wedding ring. And in 1979, the SBA gave me an $80,000 loan. I founded a company called Professional Supply. Why? Well, I didn't want architects to perceive me as a competitor. And I didn't want contractors to perceive me as a bidder. I wanted both to perceive me as a value add. I'm an aeronautical engineer. I know a little bit about thermal. And I really got some good ideas where we can really help save energy. Yeah, but Kaiser, coal's $1.88 per million BTU. Natural gas is $3.50, says the engineer. Yeah, I know, but see, I want you to go gas, turn off coal, shut down the whole infrastructure of all the steam pipes, and now you're not going to use any more water. You're not going to, all this good water you're treating, and then you send it right down the drain. It's all going to stop now because you see gas is expensive. You're right by about two and a half times more, but you won't need energy because there's so much wasted energy, we can just recycle. You're kidding me. So as those of you get under the archives in Washington, you look me up, Thomas E. Kaiser, you'll see the first two patents of 12, and they're all around, how do you get this done? I, I don't, how do you get it done? So from 1984 to 1998, I want all of you to know, I built myself a nice little company. I have a son, aerospace designer out of Purdue, second son, aerospace designer out of Michigan. And they both quit their jobs. They used to design cruise missiles. And they now run my company. Because I got four more patents I want to do before I bag this thing and then go to Washington. Because we need to work on an energy plan for the country. And it's not hard to do, especially in America, because we're so effluent. And, we, and, and when we do something, we normally do it right. Ford Motor Company comes to me and says, all right, Kaiser, you got all these good ideas. You've been working for us for 10 years. Here we go. What's the best way to scale a good solution? And I said, Ford Motor Company, the best way to scale a good solution is do 12 plants, don't do one. Really? Yeah. That's a lot of money. Oh, yeah, to do energy savings, we're going to need 90 to 110 million bucks. About 10 to 15 million per plant. Really? We're never going to get that done. The payback ain't there. We don't need money. What do you mean? Well, I don't need money. Well, I'd be glad to hand you 100 million dollars. I'll fund the project. You're kidding me. Oh, no, sir. You know how many investors in America? are standing out there right now. Did you hear what Terry said when he was up here talking about the billions of dollars that universities are sitting on trying to find investment portfolios? What if I told you this isn't about money, this is about change. This is about getting the bean counters that, by the way, do drive our decisions. I doubt there's many ladies and gentlemen in this room that would debate me that if it don't make economical sense, it's going to go through a very painful ordeal before it's dead. So if you've got a good idea, and saving energy is a good idea, and the energy savings will pay for the event to happen. Oh, and by the way, there's so much savings, I found out that without any money, you become 
cash positive. And so we did it. I went and got 100 million bucks from three of the biggest investors in America. They didn't want to know about Ford. They wanted to know about how you're going to do it. Show me your resume. No, no, Mr. Kaiser, this isn't going to be about a good idea on paper and then see you and go to the next one. This is going to be about you making sure it's sustained year after year after year so it pays a dividend for the 10-year contract. Well, Mr. Actuary, Mr. Banker, that's what we do for a living. The mission statement of PSI is we design it, we make it work year after year after year. It's called life cycle. It's very important. So we get into this $100 million contract. We shut down 43 chimneys. We turned off in place, abandoned 30,000 horsepower. Seven states, two countries. We, uh, we, we saved them about three billion in gas trains we turned off. These are little heaters, just peppered, epidemic all over their, their plants, their administration buildings. And what we did was took a new look at energy efficiency, and that's energy needed divided by any energy purchased every 60 seconds, once a minute. Took a little submetering. If it uses energy, we're going to be accountable. We're going to know how much energy it used. So we did this, and of course the big thing we turned off, all this steam that the world told me we can't turn off steam. We gotta have steam. No, you don't have to have steam. If you have steam, you got so much off cycle loss on your infrastructure, your energy costs gotta be killing you. So I go to China, Jonathan and I, we're in a report in Washington, and a guy named Gus Speth out of Yale, he jumps up and says, hey, I want you to come to Yale. You're gonna study my campus right now. No, sir, Mr. Speth, I am not. Yes, you, no, sir, I, look, I'm working for all these big industrial, you know, and they do have office buildings and all this stuff, and I'm, I have done a skyscraper, but not universities. Universities are all really efficient. They don't need me. I mean, look at academia. They, they're not gonna be like Ford Motor or General Motors or Delphi. I mean, their universities are gonna be efficient. And Gus looked at me, Dean of Environmental Studies, and he said, son, you got a lot of growing up to do. <laughs> so I said, Gus, I don't want to come to Yale. I, I, it, it's not a good thing to do. Don't make that business decision. All I might cause is a disruption anyway. So you know the rest of the story. Gus wins. $77,000. Later, I get done with a study in Yale. Little campus, 126 buildings. 17 miles of infrastructure, one of the brand new best turbine, gas-fired turbine systems I've ever seen, beautiful facility, and we're studying it, we're doing our thing. Oh my God, Yale's worse than Ford Motor. And I don't know how I'm gonna tell him this. I don't have the heart to tell. So I go to Gus and I said, Gus, how'd you know? I know, hearing you do the report on China and how you're trying to help China, Understanding what you did over there and how you reported it, I knew we were in trouble. How bad is it? Uh, you sit, sit down, Gus. You know your $20 million bill? Yeah, I can make it go to 10. No big deal. Yeah. Gus, you know your emissions into the atmosphere you're worried about? Yeah. I can reduce that 76%. Really? Yes, sir. Uh, you know a pound of gas not burnt. A pound of gas avoided is two and a half pounds of emission, never got produced. You know, you, 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 know, uh, I don't, I don't, you know, the Ford Motor Project, uh, it was all money driven or I'm bankrupt. In fact, my sons asked me not to do it. See, I guaranteed Ford Motor that if I don't save you $15 million a year, I'll write you a check. I'll write you the Delta. That's why the banks did it. That's why the syndicated investors are out there in America saying, whoa, wait a minute. He's guaranteeing the savings. The savings is making the lockbox. And everybody wins. It's a no-brainer. So that's how this developed. And thanks to the general counsel and the attorneys at Ford, and thanks to the energy people at Ford, and every one of them plant managers, and all the people involved. By the way, guess who flies the planes and works on them for me? UAW. Greatest group of skilled trades I've ever met in the world. I've been around. 
I want you to know we coach the skilled trades. Right, we coach them. It's about winning. You, you're, you're, the theme of your meeting here today is about winning. Let's get after the sustainability thing. So I, I a few years back, met Joe Soldano. Check Joe out, resume. Joe now works for me, my director of development. I said, Joe, I'm 56 years old. I don't have long, but I've decided we need to create an epidemic in energy efficiency. And if we did it, Joe, we got balance in global warming. Done. And now we can showcase, like America always has done, ladies and gentlemen. Remember who you are. You know what I get when I'm a senior advisor to China? I'm the first China government official since the People's Republic. I'm proud of it. The, uh, President Reagan and Vice President Gore had to approve this because of them being a communist nation. But when Dr. Chung offered me this appointment to the senior advisor, Economic Commission, and, and when all this went down, I want, to know, I want you all to know what China's about. Ah, Mr. Kaiser, we be like America? You do America? We want to be like America. I mean, remember, everybody looks up to you, including you universities. I mean, look how they come here to learn. So we're, we, we need to be really proud. We can solve anything. Lake Erie's fine, thank you. I mean, because we can solve problems. We're not only good at making them. Don't forget that's your new opportunity. Let's go create a new one. Now, I want to share with you what this is about. I hope the financial people heard me. If you looked at how to finance a good thing, it don't need donations, it don't need taxes, and it don't need grants from taxpayers' money. That's my biggest dilemma. The bean counters run the country. So, so when you're done looking at the bottom line, a couple things I want to point out. I didn't know this. Ford Motor and Chicago Carbon Exchange taught me, Mr. Kaiser, do you know what you just say, Ford and carbon emissions? No, sir. So we calculated it. Oh, today I know. I mean, thanks to McDonough, and thanks to this project, and thanks to being aware of what we're doing to our environment, I now engineer the environmental affairs. I no longer back into it. We now go into it with a strategic green plan. In fact, this summer, I just introduced a liquid chimney in Fortune magazine. You'll see me in December where I let them come in and do the fortune, the liquid chimney. Now, now this summer we're going to introduce the green machine. And it's going to be a really neat thing. So why you universities? And I want to conclude, why am I here? I found out through having the opportunity of being around people like Jonathan, it hit me, why is his dad so involved in universities? Click. A, a, a while back, thanks to us crossing paths together and understanding the Weggy Foundation that I struggled to understand, I said to Joe, now I want to finish my career at the universities. Why? They're where we gravitate. The federal government gravitates to the universities. Research and development from corporations and old, old duffers like me, we gravitate to the, to the universities. But uh, our speaker this morning, Dave, Dave talked about, I got five free kids. I got five free young people working for, they aren't free. It's a university investing in developing some new leaders. So in, in, in the case of universities, I'm down to Ohio State. I'm getting off the team bus one day. We're going in to play Penn State. And I looked up at that 16-story chimney, and I said, hey, Tress, our head coach is a guy named Jim Tressel. I said, hey, Tress. See that chimney? Yeah. Oh, you always ask me, what do I do? I take them down. What? Yeah, I take them down, coach. Someday I'm going to pull that chimney down. We don't need it here at Ohio State. I said, it's incredible what it's costing. Not long ago, because of McDonough, I had to visit University of Michigan. I'm walking around University of Michigan with one of their maintenance operator engineers. And oh my god, the energy savings opportunity at Michigan you, you can't even put it in dollars and cents. For me to walk into uh, John Carroll in Cleveland or Ohio State and say, reduce energy by 50%, you don't need to invent a thing. Technology's all there. So where's it start? Well, you meet people today, like I met Ed, the president of this university, and he says to me two things that really are cool. Number one, he says, you know, Tom, our enrollment, we're a liberal arts, arts program. And Ed says, you know, it's, we're very proud of it, but you know what is really hot right now? 
the enrollment into our sustainability program. He says, Tom, they're signing up so f Really? So the young people are listening. Why do I want to go to the university? It's very important now. What do we do? Number one, let's demonstrate at the university. Let's demonstrate energy savings. Number two, let's get finance school into it and get some of the money Terry's talking about and finance the pro forma. It don't need any, it don't need a bunch of alumni to pull out their wallet, not whatsoever. So let's finance demonstration and then engineering has to design it over and over again and engineering, get them out of the classroom and also make them as freshmen work on it and sustain it. So Joe, I want to go to universities because you all together are much better than apart. As you collaborate and get together like this, you bring huge platforms of gravity and you are our key to future engineering. If we are going to do sustainable development, it will be done with the future engineers. I'm down to Ohio State the other day. I'm staring at a $528 million project. And I said, I said to the one gentleman provost, could I meet the designer of that building? Sure. And I met these people. They're all very good college graduates 25 years ago. Not one new technique is going into that building. Not one. By the way, you walk around Ohio State, and it's like a day like this. It might be in the 40s. All the windows are open. Why is that? It's too hot. You know, so when you get, when you get into what we call change, what if, I said to Joe, what if I could take and bring not only green building designs into the university where students want to come and learn what's the future of architecture. So I have Scott. Scott McNeil over here is the architecture of the future. How come when the sun comes out, buildings don't make energy? They use energy. How come when the sun comes out, we have a peak load of electric, sometimes a blackout? Last time I was in Detroit, they had three, four city blocks just black out. Talk about the inconvenient truth. You know, and so wh where we're going is, and where I'm going, I'm not academia. I don't know how to do it. And I know you people, your core business is the community of learning. And learning is our future. Learning provokes change. And now when we can provoke change, we can provoke the entrepreneurism as they head out into society and we create a good problem. So with that, I wanted to share with you again. Again, we were really excited. Uh, by the way, them pro formas of $100 million for Ford Motor are in their fifth year. And our goal was to save $15 million a year, you know. I mean, otherwise I'm bankrupt. Because if it's only $14 million, I got to write them a check for a million. Well, I can only do that for a few years. And then the farm is gone. So you can imagine my advisor, my wife, my everybody that loves me said, don't do it. Don't do it, Dad. Hey, what do you, what, wait a minute. If I'm an engineer and I'm a designer, are you telling me I won't guarantee what I recommend? I mean, you want to get a prescription, and yet the doctor says, I'm not sure I want to guarantee it? So what we're doing is we're taking a little different accountability stroke to it, and I'm proud to tell you, last year, and especially in the time where Ford needs it, the uh, savings was $52 million. The project's no longer a $15 million five-year payback. Huh. Just by the fifth year, the UAW, tremendous amounts of motivation and, and, and inflation. I heard somebody talk, I think it was Tom, somebody was talking about, you know, oil ain't going to get no cheaper. Neither is natural gas. President Reagan decentralized natural gas. President Clinton said, I like what Reagan got for votes. I'm going to do electric. So we decentralized, you know, electricity, right? Now we got a grid really overloaded. Took the rules out of the game. If I had a solar farm for you, I can't even get it on the grid, folks. If you study electricity and pressure, I can't even get it on the grid now if I did have a solar farm for the United States of America because it's so pressurized, it's so loaded with us transferring electricity. Now, that may not seem like much to you, but I want to share with you the key to energy efficiency. If, if the closer you produce the energy to the load, the more efficient you are. So we decentralized. Now we transfer energy all over America 
for thousands and thousands of miles. It didn't help our carbon footprint neither. So with that, I'd like you to uh, 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 know, wow, I'm going to universities, Joe. I'm going to finish my life. I love coaching young people. I'd love to coach the coaches. That means the professors of the curriculum. That means, and by the way, we're only talking the curriculum of current engineering, nothing new. And let's wrap it and embrace it around sustainability. So I hope some of the comments of value for you. Uh, that's our goal. I was very fortunate to run into Jim Beiser on the US China board from Arizona State. He then heard me talk up at Washington DC. Jim is now taking me out to Arizona. I'm looking forward. I'm about to have my first engagement, official engagement with the university of this type of curriculum and interface with Arizona State and the president, Michael Crow. I lo I'm looking forward to it. It's later this month. And with that, I, 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 I hope all of you, you have any questions for me, please know I'll be around. In honor of the Weggies inviting me over here, I plan on being around. I'm glad to address any questions. And again, I want to emphasize that, you know, in America, you're not only a major part of the GMP, you ought to see the growing and the building you're doing. You people are growing and building. You're growing and building over all of our industry. So it's really important you do and will make a difference. And with that, uh, America is a great place to coach, and failure is not an option. You just got to make sure you're in a locker room with people that have desire. They don't have desire. They have any doubt in their eye. That kid's probably right. If he's got any doubt about winning, he's probably right. If he's going out that door and he only knows we will win, it's how. And we'll win. It's that simple. And with that, I believe in the human spirit because it's a man-made solution that's needed. We'll get it done. Thank you.